Hi everyone, Selena for Who is Jesus Today. How are you doing everyone out there? How are you doing to the wonderful people in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in South America, in Central America, North America, uh, the South Pacific Islands, okay, Australia, Central Asia, Siberia. Siberia is an interesting place. <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, introduce some things about Siberia later coming up. So, greetings to the globe. I'm going to jump right in and read in Genesis chapter 22. A few verses. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. Let's keep this in mind. Abraham is going to have a test. That's the key word, a test. Okay. Then he said, Take now your son your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Okay, so now a little background history here. Abraham had a wife named Sarah. It's a very uh, popular uh, story if you've been around the Christian community for any length of time and Sarah was up in age say 90 I mean you know that's way past childbearing uh, years <laughs> there doesn't seem to be much help if you are 90 and God gave them a promise you know a promise with a capital P and she was gonna have a child up in years and Abraham He's not a spring chicken either. He's up in age too. So here we have an elderly uh, couple that is God has given them a promise that they're going to have a child. And that son is very significant because that son represents a promise in the plan of God. And you'll find in Isaac also it is a foreshadowing of the gospel as well so I won't go into depth this is not an in-depth a uh, teaching I do those at times where I really have to stretch myself and go through scriptures and find uh, connections in the Old and the New Testament but I just want to say because for those of you who are uh, familiar with your Bibles you have heard of this story and even if you're not, you may have already heard of it. Um, so we have an elderly uh, couple, let's just say, I would say beyond senior citizens, I mean, just up in age. And at this time in their lives, God is promising them a son named, and, th and that son will be called Isaac. Now, Sarah doesn't really uh, believe all of this so much at first. I mean, you know, it is her body that has to carry the child okay um, so she's not so certain about it and um, there was some of uh, this belief I won't go into further extension of this story because there's there is a lot more to this but because I want to focus on a particular subject matter I'm going to stay within the context of exactly what I am reading but I wanted to make sure I give some background knowledge what is going on here so Abraham rose early in, in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and he split the wood for the burnt offering 
and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes. So see, Abraham is obeying the Lord. Let's take note of that. He is doing what the Lord told him to do. Because that's, that really shows you he has love for God. He wants to obey of the Lord. But the Lord is going to, the, the Lord is really stretching uh, Abraham's uh, faith right now. And Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of, of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with uh, the donkey and lad, and I will go yonder and worship. And we will come back to you. Smart thing to do. Wise. He saw the place afar off. He says, let me go and worship. A lot of times, brothers and sisters around the world, and those of you who are just trying to figure out what am I talking about. So, when God is telling us to do something, the next step is to obey. And then Abraham takes another step because this step is going to help him as well to keep going on God's assignment. He began to worship. Worship the Lord. Regardless of what's going to be ahead, you're going to do well if you just stop and acknowledge and honor and worship God. So Abraham is a, is a worshiper. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son. He knew what he had to do. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire in the wood. But now the son is starting to think, But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. He heard from God. He knew what uh, the assignment was. He had to believe that God is guiding him and what God is saying to him if he obey he will have the best outcomes he had to be willing to lay the gift of God the promise of God on the altar though it was a gift a promise he finally got the promise he had to be willing to also let go of the promise. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So, so he said, well, Abraham, Abraham, in the light. <laughs> Here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. What does this sound like today, New, New Testament uh, believers? Abraham, he's going, on a, he's going out on a journey. He has a test. He's going to have to be willing to offer up 
the gift that God has given him, a promise. And he does all of the preparation. He obeys, he goes out, he worships, then he goes to do the task of the Lord. Um, he had to stop and worship. And now he makes the preparation to offer up Isaac, his son, to sacrifice him. Can you imagine what's going on in the heart of Isaac? My, my father, why are you going to hurt me? What's going to happen? Imagine the sorrow, the confusion, the fear, my own father. And he can see that his father also is agonizing. But he is determined to obey the Lord at any cost. That's a place to come. I'm always aspiring to come more into that place. Just as he was about to do the act. In verse 11 of the 22nd chapter of Genesis. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here am I. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So, Ab so Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of, that, of the place, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Amen. So, let's make this applicable to our lives. Of course, in this text, as I have, I like to say, this I am not the um, original one that made this a statement. But um, I heard how the Old Testament defends the new. Right here in Genesis, the twenty-second chapter, who is Jesus? right here. You see, ultimately, as time progresses, as it's been promised, God will offer up His Son as the sacrifice. You see, he what caught Abraham's eye was there was a lamb. There was a lamb that was a, well, uh, actually, a ram, okay, a ram, R-A-M. But that caught his eye because the Lord told him instead to offer up the ram as the burnt offering instead of his son. So there's a few uh, lessons we can take from here. One is obedience. After God, he blesses us with uh, something that we have uh, been promised. The birth of a child, a new job, a home, right? A relationship, marriage, um, a trip, <laughs> you know, uh, increase in your finances. The thing is, God speaks, God is always uh, speaking. The problem is, for a lot of us in humanity, are we willing to listen, to stop and to listen? God does speak. Even for those who do not want to hear God, I can tell you personally, there was a time in my life I I would not I did not want to really hear the voice of God. And I'm 
I'm telling you the truth that I felt I was starting to hear God's voice. And it was like kind of new to me, and I didn't, I because I was also uh, still in resistance to the gospel and to Jesus. I feel something happening inside of me. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is pulling me in. I'm starting to hear a voice. It's loving. It's comforting. It's an invitation. But I'm not ready. I'm, I'm still in a place of denial about what I'm feeling. But when you come into a relationship with Jesus, the Word of God says, My sheep hear my voice. So the closer you're coming, now it's not that you maybe you're hearing God's voice of today because God is calling you, but you're not yet in a relationship. So now in a, a relationship, that communication becomes ongoing. So Abraham is obviously, he is in connection with God, with the living God. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he is our God also, today. And some of us are also directly a lineage that can be traced back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But I would say that all of us humans of the earth can be trace back to the same parents. Isn't that something? Yes, Adam and Eve. Remember? In the beginning, the creation story, we had to come here from someone. We had parents, Adam and Eve. But the story of the people have been, who have been set out and set aside in the creation story who are called Jews are called Jews not uh, based on how they look they are Jews because of what they believe in a monotheistic living God and so we refer to them as the people who believed and the God, the same God that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob uh, believed. That's the God that I believe in today. How about you? So, Abraham believed in this God enough, connected to obey, to step out on in faith on his journey, and to worship. And to keep going and making the preparation. Because my word to myself today in the world. Whatever we have received from God. Every gift and blessing. We also want to make sure it doesn't become our idol. All of us, we have a tendency for idolatry. To worship other things other than the living God. And so, even a, a, a precious gift that was promised to us by God, we want to come to that place in our hearts where we begin to embrace sacrifice. And it's like, thank you, Lord, but I'll hold it loosely. And if you ask me for it back, bring my heart into a place of loving fellowship where I can say you gave this to me and now Lord I give it back to you right from the Lord it came from the Lord I return it back but God in his loving mercy didn't want Abraham's son because instead he was going to give his son but Abraham he took that step of faith and he showed that he could believe God and be willing to sacrifice his most precious gift his son Isaac do you hear the, the gospel a message in that 
that God would sacrifice his son instead. Yes, his treasure for the atonement of the sins of mankind. What we see in Genesis 22 is a foreshadowing of that which is to come. So, as I close out, my question here is, what has God put his hand on in your life that he's asking you to let go and surrender? If we are not willing to put it on the altar of sacrifice, then we have to question is it an idol? Even it can be something that, as with, say, Abraham, that God has given us. He has blessed us with. It's not that, you know, we talk about, say, idols. People think about certain things, right? Um, you know, say, a graven images. However, See, something good, a gift can also become your idol. Abraham had a gift from God. Isn't that, isn't, isn't that true? Isaac. But he loved God too much to make that an idol that he had to hold on to, to the point where he could not obey. See, if we cannot obey and, and, and release it and obey, then yeah, it becomes an idol idol but listen God is loving and merciful and I used to hear a lot some years back when I was in church he's a God of a second chance but I'll say a second a third and so on Abraham got it right the first time some of us don't some of us don't we're holding on to even that precious gift that God has given us just say, here it is. A lot of times, when we do let go of certain things, in return, we find that we're blessed even more. And what we were holding on to, God had something better. God had someone better, something better, a better place, a better job, opportunity. Even your calling or a ministry, if we can let it become an idol. So this is what I have actually uh, taken from this. This is not the only, um, say, uh, a revelation that can come out of this text. I mean, this is what I feel the Holy Spirit has downloaded on me to share. But another person, like you out there, can read the same uh, scriptures, and and then you will you will really see from the Holy Spirit a different a uh, revelation. This is how we take the story in its context, keep it in its context. This is how it uh, happened. This is who we are talking about. This is the time and history in the book of Genesis. But in this too, we can see. We can see the light of the gospel. Abraham's son, Isaac. God's son, Jesus, Yeshua. We can expand on this more. But this is where I felt I needed to go. And where I need to stop. So, fellow citizens of the world. That's a little more of a Bible study. Um... I am aware that, you know, religions have their texts, what they refer to as their holy texts as well. And as many of you know out there, that as Christians, we refer to the Bible as our holy texts. God speaking to us, God's instruction, and God's love letter to us. But we do go a further than that, and we, we do say this is God's love letter message to humanity because that's what we believe and you know um, there was a time I did not believe this at all but I've had a heart change 
and that has been a heart change for the better. I can testify of that as well as millions. So we do call this God's word to us, his message. And I'm sharing it with all of you. And I do believe it's, this is the word of God. Thank you for your time and for listening. I pray that you are doing well and that you will experience the love and the healing power of God in your heart and in your situations and salvation. That's who Jesus is today. You can read chapter 22 of Genesis. That's who he is forevermore. He, he was the lamb that was sacrificed for the atonement of our sins. Shalom.